Welcome back to Retro Game Coders. My name is Chris Garrett and this is part 5 of the Commodore 64 Basic Series. And in this episode we're going to look at disks and files. In a world of high technology and ever changing moods In a world that's full of belief People often forget that the Commodore 64 was invented as a business machine by Commodore Business Machines. And the main reason why the Commodore 64 is even capable of being used for business is the fact that you have storage. You can save files, you can load files back in, and you can use files in your programs. Now, before I get into how exactly we do this, I need to acknowledge the fact that folks watching my YouTube channel do not like code. The overwhelming response is you don't like to see programming. <laughs> if you actually want to look at the code in detail, then please click through to the associated article along with this video so that I don't bore you, you don't click away to another video. First of all, there are four Commodore 64 file types that we can access within Commodore 64 Basic. The first is the program file, and that's a binary file that consists of your computer program. It could also be the tokenized version of your basic program. That is a PRG. The next is a sequential file, and sequential data is simply a text file that is read from beginning to end, and you cannot go deep into the data for the part that you actually need. The next is a relative data file or a random access file, and as the name suggests, you can access individual records by number without having to read every other record before it. So if you want record number 99, you don't have to read record 1 to 98 to get to it. And the maximum size of a record is the maximum bytes per sector, which is 254. And the last is the rarely used user file, which is basically a sequential file of unknown format and you access that using the command channel. So if you do open 15, 8, 15, that will open a command channel that allows you to communicate with the operating system. And the first number is simply an identifier. The second is the device number, and then the third is the secondary number. So to format a disk, you can do print and then n file name, except you can rename a file, you can back up a file, and you can delete a file all using these DOS commands. They're not intuitive, but they do exist, and they come in very handy when you're actually working on the Commodore 64. One of the things that people get confused about with the Commodore 64 BASIC is the tokenization of your BASIC program. When you save away your BASIC program, you can't just load it into your text editor, and that's because tokenization converts the file. But we can also save our tokenized BASIC program as an ASCII file on the disk too. And the way you do that is this command here. Essentially what we're doing is listing the program, but it's outputting it to a new file. So what we're doing is saving the file as a sequential text file. S, W, we're saying we want write access to a sequential file. You can also load binary data directly into RAM. Remember I said a PRG file is essentially a binary file. We can load PRGs and we can load character sets, we can load sprites directly into a memory area. The wrinkle with this is each time you use a load statement in your basic program, it actually resets the program counter, it restarts the basic program. So we need to insert a variable as a counter to see if it's already been loaded and if so, take the necessary steps. When you're saving your file out, make sure you actually export the binary data using your character editor or your sprite editor and choose the load address that you want it to load into. That puts a header into the file that Commodore 64 BASIC will then read and it allows you to load that data into a certain memory area. We can also discover the current drive number. A lot of programs assume that everybody's using ID8, which may be true, but if you've got two drives, or in a modern scenario, if you're using an emulator, or if you're using an SD card reader, you may have one of the drives set to, for example, drive nine. If the program is hard coded to expect drive eight, then you have problems. So using this command, we can actually peak 186 and find out what the current drive number is, and then work accordingly. 